Come on, guys. Come Can we get guys. five more roses? Come on. Let's go, please. Oh, my God. Thank you, Elia, for the dragon. Come on. No. Yep. No. Screw you, Elia. You guys, no. remember to click my uh, TikTok shop in the corner. Oh, we're doing it, guys. Come on. Let's please, go. Please, please guys, guys. Come on. Please. 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 Mm -hmm. Just a few more. This is giving me the egg right now. Come on. Like you, do, you, you dudes are the best. I'm so stupid, anyways. That's not even an exaggeration of the kinds of things I've seen on this app, this cursed app. Every day I'm becoming more and more anti-TikTok. I haven't used my account on TikTok ever since that last video I made about TikTok in October. That was until this video where I had to use it. But you see, this time I was doing it for research, so it's different. I think people are starting to get disillusioned to the fact that TikTok is a very, very uh, unique user experience. From one direction you've got videos from the For You page, and then you've got ads, and then you've got a live video of ASMR, engagement bait, TikTok live. Oh, your friend just posted a video. Do you want to buy some coins? <laughs> Say what you will about the company ByteDance. You know, make her testify in front of Congress if you have to. But you can never deny that she knows how to create an algorithm. She knows how to keep the eyes on the screen. There's suddenly something quite sinister about the current state of TikTok. It's been fully integrated into the creative industry but still there's something weird happening with TikTok. Instead of improving and you know becoming more sleek and user-friendly, it actually starts to feel more dystopian the more popular it gets. Oh guys it's literally an episode of Black Mirror. It's literally an episode of Black Mirror is so dystopian. <laughs> Jason Nash is a 50-year-old internet influencer, famous mostly for his collaborations with his friend David Dobrik. You know David Dobrik. <laughs> David Dobrik is still a massive influencer, like he has his own architectural digest. I've never engaged with his content, but I've definitely been aware of him and Jason Nash during that vlog era of YouTube. Like, you really couldn't escape these guys. Oh my god! Fucking get it off, David! David, get it off! David, please get it off! Please fucking get it off! Nobody wants anything to do with David Dobrik because his reputation has been completely soiled in recent years. With previous members of the vlog squad coming out against him for all sorts of reasons. Like, there's supposed to be a documentary about it. Like, that's how bad it got. I can't get into all of it right now. Just know that David Dobrik is a horrible person. Looking back at those original Jason Nash and David Dobrik videos, there is absolute cursed, radioactive, bad energy coming off of that. David used his friend group for money, and as soon as the money stopped coming in, he ran off. He ran off to Snapchat. Now his old pal Jason Nash is left with nothing. Well, not nothing. He does have an LA mansion and a huge mortgage to pay. It seemed like a good investment at the time. So what is a 50 year old influencer supposed to do with no income and no David Dobrik by his side? No, really, like what's he supposed to do? Like he's, he's, he's fucked. Mike Timoney has joined. There's the glove. Go guys, six seconds, five. 20 seconds left. Bebo Fox Nation. Everybody bring it, bring it up. Let's go now. Snipe. Yes, Hunter. Rebecca, Hunter, Omar, we need three galaxies. Go, 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 go. No, you beat us. Boys. So that, my friends, is called a TikTok live battle. And that is when two TikTok creators both go live and compete for who can get the most digital TikTok coins paid for by the people watching. One TikTok coin is equivalent to 1.5 American cents. They're literally dancing for pennies. <laughs> No, I shouldn't laugh, because it's not funny. <laughs> it's very sleazy, isn't it? Like, it feels morally wrong to watch Jason Nash beg for digital pennies. It just feels wrong. It's like watching two homeless people fight for money behind a Las Vegas casino. Don't forget, this is also paired with the most 
insane app design you've ever seen. Like, my eyes are bleeding just watching this. So much information flying at you. Like, what do all these numbers mean? Jason Nash is doing this every day, and depending on who he's doing a battle with, and the viewership always tends to be quite low. Spending hours at a time begging probably the same 30 people for some coins. And this is not without ridicule. Like, the whole internet is reveling in the fact that this once successful influencer has now stooped so low. He's doing this all the time. Really? Like this is his full time job. And you can even hear him talking about it. He's like, I have to, he's doing this to pay his bills. If I open my TikTok one more time to seeing him begging for roses on my live for you page, I'm calling CPS. Have you seen your kids? This like digital panhandling on TikTok live is getting out of hand. Every single time I come on this app, Jason Nash is like, Send me more crazy dolphins! Send me more! Imagine seeing Jason Nash, like, you know, bagging yeah. groceries. Not that that's not an admirable job. Imagine every day people being like, holy shit, it's Jason Nash? Mm -hmm. Dude, you're bagging groceries? What the fuck? What are you doing here? <laughs> every single time I've opened my phone, Jason Nash is on live begging for money. And I want answers. The real question that everyone wants answering is, even though this is really embarrassing and dehumanizing, how much is he making? Like, how much money is it worth it? It's impossible to say for sure how much money Jason is making. To know, I'd probably be have to watching the stream, like, every day and counting the amount of coins and then converting them. <laughs> I'm not doing that. I know it'd probably be good research, but I'm not watching all that. I actually, you know, I have a life. It's probable that Jason has a contract with TikTok, a contract that works by a, you know, driving engagement or whatever. The reason I believe that Jason has a contract with TikTok is because TikTok is notorious for being one of the hardest platforms to monetize. YouTube works with Google AdSense and that's quite an easy system. TikTok on the other hand is very convoluted. I've never tried to monetize my TikTok. It wouldn't be worth it obviously, but from what I've heard, it's just really hard. You have the creator fun, and then you have TikTok shop and then you have gifts and then that goes into a TikTok wallet similar to cryptocurrency with just diamonds and coins like it's not real money and then if you want the money you can only withdraw it in small installments and then you have to have a PayPal account it almost feels like they don't want to give you your money. And with a TikTok Live, TikTok allegedly, allegedly, they take 70% of the money raised on a TikTok Live. Like if you had a thousand, you'd only see 300 of it before taxes. And I say this backed up by a study conducted by the BBC, thank you very much. I doubt that Jason Nash is using this messy TikTok wallet system to pay his bills. Jason is an extreme example though. There's a lot of people who seemingly rely on TikTok Live to make money. And the TikTok Live battle is probably the most blatant because you literally have to beg. You have to sit there and beg for the roses. Thank you so much for the dragon, Stacy. Wow. Wow, come on guys, we're so close, please, please. On the other hand, you have complete businesses that rely on TikTok Live and TikTok Shop. For example, when I entered the Thunder Dome and went back to TikTok for the first time in months, I was greeted by these two lovely ladies packing up orders of sweets. And you can tell they probably haven't seen the sunlight for a long time. <laughs> You're the officers, give me one sec, Logan, babe. You've got the monster craft coffee, pocket money bingo, you've got the jump rope, and you've got the squish fill squish in my nose play set, my darling. I think what's dystopian about these type of TikTok lives where you see people working in their tiny room is that you're not really supposed to see this side of the supply chain. This TikTok version of capitalism means that you get loads of pop-ups to buy now, buy now, buy the sweets, buy the sweets. But then once you actually see the workforce behind your order, the reality becomes very really clear. Behind every purchase, there is a real person working to survive. But instead of shutting the workforce away out of sight like most factory owners do, TikTok instead makes content out of it. We do have the um, bubble bar, fizzy bubblegum skulls. They are vegan. All bubs range. Any bubs range is vegan. I would personally recommend getting the 90 bundle though, because like I said, it's only £1.99 more in price and you get 18 more toilet rolls.
Honestly, the intensity of TikTok shop kind of reminds me of Timu. Do you know about Timu? Is it t is it Timu or t Temu? Temu? Timu? You know, the online shop that just kind of sprung out of nowhere. There's something fishy going on there. There's something really fishy going on. The advert for Timu on YouTube has 255 million views. That's over a quarter of a billion. Oh, and also 2,000 likes, but... Don't pay attention to that. I have so many dodgy emails from Timu asking for a sponsorship. They wanted me to do a fully dedicated 10 minute video just about Timu, like doing a haul or whatever. That would be crazy. Do you want that? Do you guys want that? I mean, I don't mind doing a sponsorship. I've done them in the past, but I'd rather do it with a company that doesn't immediately get flagged as spam when they email me. <laughs> Anyway, going back to TikTok Live. You know, TikTok Live doesn't always have to be people begging for money. In fact, the fateful night I went back to TikTok to get some screen recordings for this video, I was pleased to see a wonderful, really touching, beautiful dating show on TikTok Live. Positive comments only, guys. Remember, you will get muted and then blocked. I think you've done really, really well there. And also, I just want to say congratulations. Right, and thank you. Know what, but it's it's tiring. It's very tiring being a, a single mum of two now. So, you know, I'm pushing I'm through. I'm a single parent to three children. Um, and I know exactly what you That's such a weird way to one up someone. Like, oh, I'm working hard for my two kids. Well, I've got three. Yeah. Yeah, I've got three. <laughs> I, can, I can either jump at you in a nice way or a wrong way. Take your pick. You're probably saying this now as well, though, because you've got a lot of hormones going on. Hormones? Okay, all right. Anyway, so I scrolled down. I was immediately met with someone selling me clothes and then some intense ASMR. See, Jason, this is what you have to do. You have to stop shouting at people and, you know, calm the vibes down a little bit. Thank you for the coconut. No, no, get away. No, stop. Stop, you're ruining it. On the next scroll down, I was met with an intense TikTok battle. No, no. <gasps> no, 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 my time limit, no. Oh. I have no clue what happened. I think somebody gifted the wrong thing to the wrong person. It was just a huge mess. I can't believe I captured that on the screen recording. It was it was crazy. Uh, guys, at the start of the death match, I tell you, I tell you, make sure you gift the correct person. Can you imagine the daily lives of these people? Streaming like this is one of the most intense jobs on the internet because your daily life is the product. You're on there for hours at a time, making like a tiny amount of money. I went back to TikTok yesterday and Jason Nash was on there. He's doing this every day. All of this, TikToks like this, are a product of individualistic hustle culture. Capitalism's promise that if you work hard enough, you'll get what you deserve. And if that doesn't happen, then you're gonna have to go on TikTok live every day to sustain a bit of income. Oh. You know, I don't wanna judge any individuals here. Let me just say that, you know, if a business or an individual was doing financially well, do you think they'd be on TikTok live? No, TikTok Live is where you go when you have nothing, when you have to start somewhere. And TikTok knows this, and they exploit that reality. They know that a lot of the people doing TikTok Lives really need the money. That BBC study that I mentioned earlier about TikTok taking 70% of the revenue, that was a study about Syrian refugees in camps having to resort to doing TikTok Lives. <laughs> This is the account I've been using to follow some of these families in Syria. And you can see here, all of these accounts are live right now. Then Mohammed checked the balance of his account. $33, so it is 70%. From our $106, TikTok took $73. 
that's almost 70%. I mean, TikTok profiting 70% from all this, it's not a good look. It's really not a good look. Places like that where people go to live in bundles all together in a makeshift content farm are actually quite common. That sweet shop business, I'm sure there's like a hundred of them all stacked against each other in a massive warehouse. It's all just further proof that the internet is in a really strange place at the moment. We have monetized every aspect of the internet to the point of frenzy, like everyone's trying to do the same thing. A TikTok live seems to be the least respectable way to get money on the internet right now. But even schemes like AI and drop shipping and content farms, all that stuff is a part of the same kind of internet sleaziness. But you know, when an influencer exploits the internet by doing wannabe Andrew Tate stuff, they call him an, an entrepreneur. They give him a podcast, do hustle montages on TikTok. But the reality is you're using the internet in the worst way to get every last crumb of money, just like how Jason Nash is begging for money. There's a double standard of these people, you know, respectable, not respectable, but I see them all the same. I saw this one video of this guy using AI to do as much TikTok content as possible, and it still stands out to me as one of the most, like, scummy things I've ever seen. Like, you're just clogging up people's for you page. Here's how I make a hundred TikToks per hour using AI. Head over to YouTube and copy the link of any long form video. Podcasts and stream highlights work the best. Go to Opus.pro, paste your link and hit get free clips. In a few seconds, it'll generate a bunch of ready to post TikToks with captions and virality scores so you know which ones will get the most deep. First thing I do is go and search for popular YouTubers to screen record. After watching their video for a minute or two, I end the screen recording and crop the video. Then I open up CapCut and start a new project. Then you want to go to auto captions and start using this Format. Then you want to export your video, go over to your TikTok page and upload it. Here's how I make £20,000 a day posting Joe Rogan on TikTok. I can't tell you the amount of videos I've seen where it's a it's an entrepreneur talking to people about, or oh, if you just work hard enough, you know, there's this little hack that you do. You can be just like me. And on the other hand, Jason Nash, well, nobody wants to be like him, do they? Now look, would I be on TikTok Live if I wasn't in like a financial hole? Mm. I don't know, probably not. YouTube wasn't really working and I needed to find something. Comments are like, why doesn't he like work like a real job? Like this right. isn't me saying this as a negative thing. Yes, I'm yes, just no, totally asking. It, please. Yeah, yeah. Why don't I get a real job? <laughs> no. Okay, you know what? Just flavor it like that, like that. Why don't you get a real job? Uh, I don't have any skills. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is more anxiety inducing and painful for an influencer than giving them a reality check that they probably need to get a real job. Is Hank from Breaking Bad in the elevator having a panic attack? A lot of the time people just say, get a real job because they, they don't like what you do but when it's real when it's like jason who does need to get a real job it really it hits deep for people like jason with no skills i don't have any skills tiktok is the last place you go just before you hang up your influencer hat it really is a last resort a lot of the people trying desperately hard to get as much money on tiktok as possible are people that have grown up watching influencers they've idolized that hustle the same goes for people calling themselves entrepreneurs when all they've done is screen record some Joe Rogan clips and buy some electric whisks off Alibaba. <laughs> You know, this is why I hate TikTok, because we're in this little sliver right now, this moment in history where there's a lot of growth, there's a lot of engagement, there's a lot of people, but there's not much regulation or morals. When you've got families begging on TikTok Live, you know you've hit the bottom of the barrel. And of course, it takes years for politicians to actually catch up to the internet. Like, they've only just figured out emails. And if you watch the American Congress hearing of the TikTok CEO, you can tell that, you know, we're a couple years until there's actual regulation here because these people have no clue what they're talking about. Mr. Chu, does TikTok access the home Wi-Fi network? Only if the user turns on the Wi-Fi. I, I'm sorry, I may not understand that. Also, a lot of the um, American politicians are taking a very anti-Chinese stance because it's a Chinese company, I guess. Have you ever been a member of the Chinese Communist Party? Senator, I'm Singaporean. No. I don't care if it's a Chinese company running the social media. I just don't want the social media riddled with exploitation, sleaziness, and an algorithm that just rots your brain. I'm starting to sound like that one white guy with dreadlocks who always talks about deleting social media. What's his name? I see him everywhere. He's always there talking about deleting social media. What's his name? This is what I would call almost a stealthy addiction. It's, it's a statistical addiction. When they keep threatening to ban TikTok, like, honestly, 
do it. Just do it. Just get it over with. And any actual talented people from TikTok will survive the shutdown. I think audiences can tell the difference between trash, spam content, and genuine talent. There is a lot of good content on TikTok. People wouldn't be using TikTok if it wasn't good, but it's getting drowned out by all the all the weird stuff. Also, before anyone says in the comments, this is not me being jealous or being a hater because people are making money on TikTok. I'm definitely not jealous. If anything, I'm surprised that a platform so influential could be so insane. And I'm also surprised that David Dobrik can be such a horrible friend. I mean, fuck you, David. You ruined your best friend's life. <sighs> this all being said, I am actually, in fact, one undinged notification bell away from joining my comrades in the content farm. So if you want, you can become a member of the channel. You know, there's those are extra perks. Click the join button below, you can check them out. You know, it might be worth it, you never know. Wait a second. I just asked people to financially back the channel in a video about how weird it is to beg for money on the internet. It's not, it's not the same thing. No, no, on, on, honestly, it's not the same thing. No, no, wait, please. No, no, please, no, wait. Double tap, double tap, double tap. Bottle of red. Michael Furio. Bottle of kind of moon, Lord. Michael Furio. I'll meet you anytime you want. In our Italian restaurant. Do 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 do